Guys, what's going on? Jeremy LaFrance, Backstage Entertainment, sitting here with Mike, Devil Driver. Mike, this we just talked, number two. Mm -hmm. You don't remember us, but it's number two. I, I don't oh, know. No. That's all right. How many interviews do you do, though? Not you that do... many. Really? No. Because well, I think it's... this is only the second interview I've done on this tour. Really? Yeah. Did you do them a lot on previous tours or anything? Cause... Yeah, it's... We'll start doing more, I think, when we start promoting the new record. Yeah. When it gets sooner to the release date, which... Don't ask me when that is. I'm not 100% sure yet. Well, then you just crossed off a question on our list. Because Wikipedia says TBC, which I don't know if that's to be confirmed or whatever, but... Uh, I've heard a couple of dates, but it's... Uh, you, don't wanna, you don't want to commit yourself to anything, though. Not yet. No, not yet. It's, it's done, though. It's mastered. Okay, okay. Um, so what are you the, waiting all, on? All the song <laughs> titles haven't been worked out. <laughs> okay. still has to... We're, you know, a lot of them are still working titles, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to work that out, and uh, um, I think all the artwork is done, but I'm very, very happy with this record. Really? Like, honestly, I think this is the most happy I've ever been with any record. So what's been different than previous ones, or what do you like about it most? Well, we went with a different producer, we went with Steve Evitz this time. Okay. And we, for the very first time, me, Neil, our other guitar player, and Austin, our drummer, actually got together and did pre-production. Yeah, right. Come on in. Four. Come on in. No, come on in. Come. Oh, damn. We almost got one. Yeah, we're trying we're to real. Yeah, let's say we're trying to lure people in here. Right. 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 Actually, well, I, I guess it's part of the interview, but I guess yeah. I should turn my ringer off. Right. Oh, well, you yeah. can't. Yeah, if we, it's obnoxious. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I said, you guys. I, I used to have a really obnoxious ringtone. It was the uh, the seagulls from Finding Nemo. Oh, mine, mine, yeah. mine. Yep. Yep. That was the most obnoxious one I've ever had. But anyway, we actually spent two weeks. Uh, we rented out a studio in Chino, California, okay. and went there for two weeks straight and just went through all the songs. And you know, Neil wrote about half the record. I wrote the other half. Austin wrote a few songs, and you know, when Steve was. You know, I've never learned all the riffs on mm -hmm. any record. You know, because our old drummer, our old bass player, our old guitar player, we we all wrote. So if you wrote it, you played it on the record. Right. For the most part. And this time around, Steve really wanted Neil on one side for rhythms and me on the other. Right. And I was like, Steve, there's no way. I mean, it's a double record. Like, I, I don't have the time to, to learn all mm -hmm. 20 songs. Right. Even my own that I write. Because when I write, I have to go relearn everything. Because I, I record it, and then I just kind of forget about it and uh, worry yeah. about it later. But uh, this time around, and he kind of just Jedi mind tricked me into learning all the songs. Mm -hmm. So I did, and uh, but it was a cool process. I mean, it was mostly he really schooled Austin on the drums a lot during those two weeks, and you know some songs were like, okay, there's a lot of songs you know using um, a baritone or a seven string. So mm -hmm. we have some some songs that are tuned down to drop A on this, actually quite a few. And then we went in the studio and just, you know, Steve has, has a different way of working on things. You know, we use a different amp and a slightly different guitar tone for right. every song, you know, which I, I had never done before. And I actually did the same thing when I was producing the new Wednesday 13 record. And I believe that comes out in September. Okay, I'm so you got to pretty sure about that. that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Not your own, but hey, but, but Wednesday 13 is here tonight. Yes, so. yes, he is. We, we're in the we're in the ballpark. Yeah, here. we became good friends, as you imagine. So yeah. we we're all just kind of like, yay, summer camp. Right, you know? that's right. But uh, it's do always... you talk? Do you talk about your gear in inter interviews? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, we I have... love talking about gear. Well, all right. Well, see, uh, my cameraman loves guitars and stuff too, and so he's like, you know, you should talk about good yeah. gear. Who's Squire is that? Okay, so we got a Squire oh, over here. That's funny. It is not. It is not mine. It's what I started with too. It, yeah. it mine did not look like a Strat though. Mine, I still have it. I bought it off my guitar teacher when I was ten years old. But yeah. I don't know if ESP is gonna get mad at me if you show that. Well, that's true. We're just yeah. We're I play ESP guitars exclusively. Yeah. You don't have yours in here though, yeah. and you're not going to. You probably have you guys sound checked already? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. then that's what. No, I got. I got one over there that I keep in the dressing room. Oh, I got gotcha. you. It's a red Eclipse. I, I mostly play Eclipses at home and uh, V's mm -hmm. live for the most part. Um, 
So that's the thing too, is some people you'll hear a rumbling behind us. Our back is to the stage. So the way this venue, we're at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Sioux City, Iowa tonight. And the way it's set up is green room is directly behind the stage. You just go around the corner and up. So yeah, if we get some noise in our interview, people know what it is. And it's, it's pretty cool. We're just backstage entertainment. That's why we're trying to lure people in here. And we just show what it's like to be you guys backstage. It's not all the glamour and stuff people always well, think, right? No, I mean, all the strippers and, the, you know, the bowls of cocaine are stashed somewhere else. Right, right. We usually put them away for interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> you want to be a man, it's nothing like you would expect. Right, right. So well, It's a little bit like you would expect, but not a lot. Yeah. The downtime. Don't do drugs. There you go. It's a good message there, <laughs> right? So... When you're talking about learning songs or relearning songs after you write and everything, this new record would make how many now that you guys have? Well, technically it's a double record, right. and as of now, the plan is to stagger the releases. I don't know how far apart from one another. Mm -hmm. I would imagine it would be at least within six months. But, uh, um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. How many records would this make it in total for you? See guys? how quickly I forget. No, oh, exactly. No, it's, 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 so not, it's, it's gonna lead into it's my a question. It's shock that I don't remember you guys from Lincoln, well, right? Yeah. That, and then this will lead into my question. Say, so, so technically, if you count the covers record that we did, the uh, Outlaws Till the End, this is album nine and ten, I believe. Okay, so could you go back to album two, three, four, whatever, and play any song from memory i'm gonna say no some of them yeah of course <laughs> okay. like but not like uh, any like not that were hits oh, or something like well, that i mean on the first three see first three records we play i remember always thinking there was like two songs off the first three records that we never played live so a bulk of the first the songs on the first three records we played it live at, at some point mm -hmm. Uh, and then when Pray for Villains came out, which is album number four, you know, obviously it's just like, okay, now you got four records, you only have so much time to play, and, you know, so we stopped playing less. But there's some songs I don't think I'll ever forget how to play because we played it so much. But, you know, every now and then if we play something we haven't played in a while, then, yeah, I do need some refreshing to right. do. And right. I have a lot of the songs tabbed out at home from you know relearning them before i went in the studio and so sometimes i gotta go and <laughs> find my notes or just figure it out do you ever ear. have to have any cheat sheets on stage for no. anything okay no. okay that's a set list that's yeah. about it yeah and and usually it's the town name you know you always i've seen those like they'll put gaff tape i on, haven't like, seen up on the speakers uh, the riser, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's our riser or statics, or maybe we're sharing it. I, I'm not sure, but uh, not the drum riser, the ego riser right. up front. But yeah, this it's, the city name is always written on there. Well, and the thing is here is we're Sioux City here, and there's Sioux Falls, South Dakota, like an hour away. And so we've had it. I think it was actually we were here for all that remains, not to not to bash Phil or anything, but Phil got up on stage and said, "Welcome Sioux Falls" or something. And, you know, it happens. It happens. I mean, you guys are in a new place every day. I've almost gotten kicked out of a couple bars because they thought I was drunk. You know, my mom would call me just to check in on me and make sure I'm still alive, you know. Okay. And uh, she'd be like, where are you? And I I wouldn't know. So I'd ask the bartender, I'm like, what city is this? And yeah. they'd always give me that look, like, how many drinks have you had? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, I just, I travel. I'm in a different city every day. And then yeah. my mom's just like, you got to be fucking kidding me, really? <laughs> you don't even know where you are? I'm like, what do I do now? So your mom swears at you. That's, huh? Right. Did your mom swear at you? What she does you? now. She didn't yeah. when I was a kid. I think actually <laughs> I've started, like, me and my brothers and my sister have actually influenced my parents after we turned 18 to kind of, I don't know, they swear more, more dirty jokes. Yeah. Yeah. They've, uh, all barriers are down now. Okay. They're, they're done being You're parents. You're grown up now. Yeah. Uh, and I'm the youngest, so okay. everyone is older than me. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were first talking, I, I asked, you know, do you do a lot of interviews? So the interviews you've done, is there a bad question out there that you just can remember off the top of your head? Like, I remember this person asking me this, anything stick out? Yeah, it was actually in the same place we did our last interview. I remember this guy, he was, he was just asking me some really stupid questions. And, like, one of them was, like, if you had a knife and you wanted to, like, kill somebody, who would it be? 
and I thought that really? was just like way out of line and I just you know by, by that time I was already kind of inter- annoyed with him with the interview and I think I just looked at him and was like oh I'd kill yeah. you <laughs> is that what you said though? yeah oh, and sweet. you know there were other bands in the dressing room just you know warming up for the show and everyone just just you, you know everyone looks. got that look like Ooh. and yeah. uh yeah, I think I walked out of the interview shortly after that but as far as other questions are there know. questions you get tired of answering because I remember when we started out we've been doing this for gosh nine years now and I remember when we started out it was always you know how the band form how's the tour going and that's every interview out there I don't do that many interviews so so those questions probably aren't too no. annoying to you yet no not yet okay well here let's do we this. can try to get there today if you want though we you, can can ask, get, you can ask me the same question five let's, times let's in a get row. laid back here and get annoying <laughs> <laughs> no uh so here did you guys want something to drink by the way you know no. do you you can drink during the interview if you want we're getting all crazy up in here let's get a diet coke Oh. All right. Yeah. Break it open. Coke sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Oh, all right. So I got to pick right. out the question. Yes. Right. So I asked if you remembered this. You did not. It's all right. Here we, uh, and maybe since uh, you've done this, we've added something new too. So there's a process to this. First thing you're going to do, reach in there, pick a question, read aloud, and then I'll walk you through it. Okay. All right. Easy enough, first part. Do you have another battery for this just in case? Hmm. No. Okay. Well, we'll just go until it does. All right. All right. Blinking at you? Yeah. All right. What is, what's the craziest thing a fan has asked you to sign? Okay. So, 1 through 75, pick a number. 35. Okay. During the answer, while you're answering this, you have to pretend you're a radio announcer. So, you're acting while you're giving the answer. Make sense? I mean, maybe, you know, kind of like... There you go. Uh, like, yep. This is soft, easy jams. <laughs> there response. you go. Be, yeah, yeah, do the alternative. What is the craziest <laughs> man has ever asked you? Or, no, has asked you, asked you to sign. Yep. Oh, it was a, um, a, a bag of ecstasy at OzFest. Really? Yeah. What did you... Well, what was your reaction to that? I signed it. I mean... Hey, what did you do? <laughs> I mean, just... <laughs> you know, it's like, what kind of pills are you taking, bro? And he's right. like, it's ecstasy. We sign it, and was, you know, so I signed it, and then I'm like, dude, it's like 120 degrees outside. Yeah. You shouldn't be taking ecstasy. <laughs> you know, like, it's just, well, drink a lot of water. Yeah, so, no kidding. But off the top of my head, that's, that's well, hey, that that's sticks out. Yep. I don't know why I never forgot that. It was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. All right, try maybe one or two more. Okay, what has been your biggest embarrassment on stage? Okay. This just happened recently, too. All right, let's pick another number. Uh, 45. Really excited. You seem so 37. <laughs> yeah, new number. Ooh, you're hearing voices in your head? You can pick a new number. <laughs> 38. I have something on here, but I don't even know what it means. I've never had this one answer, or uh, picked yet. I, I just have in parentheses, or no, in quotes, not my arm. Oh, I know what that means. Oh, I, you know what? I'm just going to tell the story. Yeah, do it. This is, I, th- so not my arms was somebody getting behind you and doing... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so no. I have this thing with Albuquerque that everyone that knows me, I don't... We always have great shows there, and our fans there are awesome, so don't... If you live in Albuquerque, don't take it the wrong way. I've just had really bad luck there, you know? Okay. We've had buses break down at least twice on the way... Really? ...to the venue. Um, I found out Mitch passed away from Suicide Silence when I was there. Mm-hmm. I found out Corey from Guar passed away when, when I was there. Jeez. Um, I spent my 30th birthday and my 31st birthday in Albuquerque for some odd reason. Really? I don't know how that happened. A year apart, you're there. And, uh... Um, the only time I fell on stage was in Albuquerque. Really? And of course, the whole Cavalera family was there side stage to see it. And I was just like, oh my God. You know, I went out and 
stepped over my pedal board and then when I went to go step back I didn't pick my foot up enough and I just tripped fell flat on my ass mm. I kept on trying to play to yeah. kind of pull it off and make it look cool but I was getting no guitar signal because apparently I hit my volume pedal Ooh. and uh, but Max was really cool about it you know when we were in the dressing room after the, the show he's like bro I fell off the stage once Oh, and I was like yeah okay that's that's a lot worse, a worse. And thanks for yeah. making me feel better yeah exactly right yeah, they're, they're they're cool people, very cool people. All right, let's try one more, and you can answer it normal since the actions are not. I'm not giving a very you the good actor. Well, no. see, and that's just, we I, try. I would be the worst actor on earth. I'll have to go back and watch our inter first interview with you and see if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, if you could switch bodies with any person, who would it be, and why? Real or fictional? Either one. Oh, Wolverine, yeah. without a doubt. Okay. Yeah. Just love the movies? Not, I mean, it's not that I love them. It's just a cool character. Yeah. I mean, come on. Badass, you have right? claws. Right. Who doesn't want yeah, claws? You get upset and you're just right there. Yeah. You know? No one's going to mess with you. No. No. That's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. All right. So we've had mediocre luck with the box with you. So we'll take it with that. Let's leave the fans with one last message, what you want them to know. See, okay, that's a question that annoys me. Really? Yeah. I appreciate I never know your, what to say. I appreciate hey, your honesty. Thanks for coming to the shows. Yeah. Thanks for the support. Yeah. We love you, but... It's, and it never can be a hope to see you tonight, because, like, if we said that, I'm not going to have the interview up by tonight, so... No. You know? I, I never know what to tell It's always a thank you, know, you for supporting you us or whatever, it's but... It's the same thing. Best advice you've ever gotten? The best advice I've ever got. Let me think about that. Let me think about that one for a second. Okay, I know one. Okay, got it. The one thing that kind of clicked in me when I was in music school in Santa Barbara was um, we had some pretty hardcore teachers. A lot of people think being a music major is easy, and I suppose it depends on what school you're going to, right. but it was not easy where I was going. It was brutal. We started with at least 60 people in the class and I think only 12 of us finished at the end of the year yeah and I remember um, one of my teachers just saying to the whole class like guys just don't don't be mediocre musicians mm. you know like be better than that yeah and that kind of stuck with me and I'm not saying I am the best guitar player in the world a musician or anything like that but it definitely made me think right and you know try to you know, not be the bottom of the barrel. Right. You know, and uh, did that lead I, you I, to I, practicing more or anything? Yeah, yeah. And it uh, right around that time is when I started getting into the whole recording and studio stuff. And I, I guess you know, I kind of put guitar on the side a little bit to learn how to record myself and. You know, eventually be a producer right. and a mixer and start getting into that whole world. And that's how I took it. Not so much to be a better guitar player, but to just be, have a variety of skills. Right. So, and the main reason I got into the whole recording thing is because I never wanted to pay for studio time when it came to, I just wanted to be able to do it myself. Yeah. And... Yeah, I've always, I don't know why, one of the things I, re I always remember from music school is my, one of my professors saying that to the class. Don't be a mediocre musician. Yeah, the only thing that I didn't do is learn how to sing. <laughs> kind of wish I would have spent more time doing yeah. that when I was in, yeah. That's uh, not one of my strong points. Do you feel there's stuff on albums that you could potentially, I mean, if you were a good singer? I've never you, tried. Yeah? No. Really? No, never tried. All right. Do we lose our battery? No. All right. That was a, that was a good, good timing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Jeremy the France backstage entertainment, Mike Devil Driver. Check him out. Hey everyone, thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to us on YouTube to see all of our interviews and backstage footage. Also find us on our other socials by searching at BSC Rocks or by clicking the links below in the video. By becoming a fan of Backstage Entertainment, you can enter in contests to win autographed prizes. From Backstage Entertainment, I'm Jeremy LeGrant.